In our last video we talked about um, how we can look at surface area in two different ways. So we can either be looking at kind of the faces that we can touch or that are visible and look at adding all visible faces together. Or we could look at uh, doing things by just finding the surface area of everything in total and then looking at the parts that are overlapped and subtracting the parts that are overlapped. So I'm going to show both methods for uh, two separate composite shapes. And I don't care which one you pick. Pick the one that works best for you that seems to make the most sense. Okay? So the first one I'm going to do, I'm going to look at uh, method number one, and I'm going to do it as um, like what we can touch or the different faces. Okay? So I'm going to look at this from my three different views that we would have talked about in grade eight. So front, side, and top views. So I'm going to use the different colors to kind of distinguish what's going on here. So if, I've, if I'm looking at the front of my shape here, the front, if I'm looking at it dead on, I would be able to see this portion of the rectangle here, which is uh, 12 by 3. And I would also be able to see this square face sitting on top from the cube. Okay, so if I'm looking at the front, I would see those two shapes. I would kind of see it stacked like this. Okay, and I would see the exact same thing on the back, just flipped around. Okay, so the front and the back view for this one is the same. So I'm going to do the front and the back, and whatever I get, I'm going to multiply by 2. Okay, so I'm going to say the front and the back times 2. Okay, uh, so if I just find the front, I'm going to times that measurement by 2, is what I mean. Okay, so the front is 12 times 3, okay, for this first rectangle that we have here, okay, and then the square part is 3 times 3, and since the front and the back are the same, I'm going to take the sum of those two things and multiply my answer by 2, okay? So uh, 12 times 3 gives us 36. 3 times 3 is 9. 36 plus 9 gives us 45, and 45 times 2 would give us 90, okay? So my front and my back make up 90 centimeters squared, all right? Let's look now at the side view. So if I look directly from the right-hand side, similar idea, I'm going to see this rectangle, and I'm also going to see this uh, square from the cube. So when I'm looking at the left side, the left side would look like this, smaller rectangle than we had before, but we would still see the square sitting on top of it. And the right side is going to look exactly the same. Okay, so again I'm going to find the left side, and since I got the left side and the right side, I'm going to multiply my left side answer by 2. So I've got 8 times 3 for this bottom rectangle, and then I have the 3 times 3 for the square, or the cube, that's sitting on top. And I'm going to take that answer, and I'm going to multiply it by 2. 8 times 3 is 24, 3 times 3 is 9, and 24 plus 9 gives us 33. And that 33 times 2 would be 66. Okay. Now, here's where it's a little bit strange. As I look down on this thing from the top, okay, I would be able to see this top of the rectangular prism, but I'm also going to be able to see the top of the cube. And something weird happens here. So if you were a bird and able to fly above this thing, when birds look straight down at the ground, they can't actually see depth. So they might be able to see that square shape but that square shape isn't sitting over top of anything on this rectangle. It just actually blends in and becomes part of the rectangle. Okay, so when I look straight down, all I'm seeing is just a rectangle. Now if I didn't have that cube there, let's say I had painted it green and then I pulled the cube off, yeah, I would have a square hole, right, that didn't get painted because the cube was sitting on top of it. Right? So if I pull that cube away, that part would be white. It wouldn't be painted green. Then I put the cube back on top, and the cube is painted in green on the top, so we would see that. Okay? So when I'm looking at the top, the top and the bottom end up being the same here. Okay? Nothing. Uh, my view hasn't changed. Yes, I can see that there's a square there, but it's not overhanging. 
right? So it's not uh, it's not like something's coming out like this, where the top of the square is hanging over top and casting a shadow down below. Okay, so I'm just going to find the top and the bottom. So I'm going to find the top, and whatever I get for that, I'm going to times by two. So I have a oh, that's the eraser. We don't want that. So I have a 12 centimeter by eight centimeter rectangle. So 12 by eight, and that's actually just all I need. It's going to happen twice, right? 12 by 8, and that's what the bottom and the top both look like. So I'm going to multiply by 2. Uh, 12 times 8 gives us 96, times 2 is 192 centimeters squared. So now I'm simply going to take all my dimensions and add everything all together. Okay, so we had our 90 centimeters squared plus our 66 centimeters squared plus our 192 centimeters squared, and in total, that is 348 centimeters squared. Okay, so that's with doing the faces, thinking about what we can physically touch, what we see on all our different views. Okay, now if you would prefer, in another way, I'm just going to look at each shape separately. So I've got a rectangular prism, and I've got a cube. So for my rectangular prism, I've got the top and the bottom, the left side and the right side, and the front and the back. Okay, it doesn't matter what order you do them in. I think I mixed it up from before, so I apologize. But regardless, so if I look at the front of the rectangular prism, it's that same red one we had before, so that's 12 times 8, and, or sorry, 12 times 3, and the front and the back are the same, so I'm going to times that dimension by 2. 12 times 3 is 36, times 2 gives us 72. For the side, the left side and the right side are the same. That would be 8 times 3, and I'm going to multiply that by 2, because I have two of the exact same shape. 8 times 3, 24, times 2 is 48. And then finally, I'm going to look at the top. So I'm not worried about the cube, I'm going to pretend it's not there. I'll deal with the part where they connect in a minute. So that would be 12 times 8 times 2. 12 times 8, giving me uh, that 96, times 2 is 192. Okay, so my rectangular prism, add it all together, uh, ends up giving me here 312 centimeters squared. Okay, and now we're going to look at the cube. So the cube is nice because it's made up of six squares. Okay, so I just need to find the area of one of those squares and times it by six. So the area of one of those squares is 3 times 3, and since there are 6 of those squares, I'm going to times that answer by 6. 3 times 3 is 9, and 6 times 9 gives us 54 centimeters squared. Okay. Now I have to look at the connection between those two shapes. We'll call that the overlap. So the face, that it, uh, when they are connected, that we lose from the cube, we lose a square. So we're going to have our overlap is a square, and that square has an area of 9 centimeters squared. Remember, when we have those two shapes connecting together, we lose the overlap from the square, and we also lose the exact same area from the rectangular prism. Okay, So that means now, when I'm looking at my uh, overall area, I have the area of the rectangular prism, plus the area of the cube, minus the overlap, and I have to times that overlap by 2. So I've got my 312 plus 54, and I need to subtract 9 times 2. 9 times 2 being 18, so I'm going to subtract my overlap twice, and I get the same answer as when we did method 1. I still get 348 centimeters squared. Okay. So it doesn't matter which way we did it, we still get that 348 centimeters squared both ways. Okay, You pick your favorite method. Alright, i got another one to show you. So this one, it uh, looks like I've got a rectangular prism and then a triangular prism sitting on top of it, kind of giving us a nice slanted roof on top. Okay, So let's do the same idea. So I'm going to start off, uh, I'm going to look at the faces that we can see and that we can touch. Okay. So, method number one. Let's look at the front of this shape. Okay, so with the front of this shape, when I look at the front, I see this square, 
but I also would see the triangle sitting on top of it. Okay, now the front and the back are going to be the same. If I flip it around, I see the same thing. The triangle's just backwards. Okay, so if I look at the front and the back, okay, so I'm going to find the front and times it by 2. So on the front, I have that square, 8 times 8. But I also have that triangle, and that triangle has a height of 6 and a base of 8. So triangle is base times height divided by 2. Since the front and the back are the same, I'm going to multiply it by 2. 8 times 8 is 64. Uh, the 6 times 8 is 48. Cut in half is 24. So 64 and 24 is 88. And 88 times 2 gives us 176. Okay, and that's the front and the back. Now, when I look from the left side and the right side, this is where things get a little bit different. Okay, so when I look from the right-hand side, I can see this rectangle. And you would be able to see this slanted side, but we're going to deal with that separately. Okay, so I, I can see the slanted side, but it, it's I, because I know it's slanted, and I'm not going to deal with it uh, as a rectangle, so I'm going to leave that part. So from the right-hand side, I've got um, that rectangle, which is 8 times 3, and that's 24. Okay. From the left-hand side, if I was to look from the left direction, I would see that same rectangle that I had on the right, but I also have this extra rectangle sitting on top, and that goes all the way up. So really, this one goes from the bottom to the top. This one would have a height or length or whatever you want to call it of 8 plus 6, so 14, and then still the same depth of 3. So from the left-hand side, I have 14 times 3, and that's 42. Okay. Now, if I'm looking at this from the top, the top and the bottom are going to be different. The top, I have this shape here, and this is a rectangle. So on the top, I've got that rectangle, which is 10 times 3, so that's 30. And then the bottom is a different rectangle, 8 times 3, right? When we look from the bottom, uh, we see something different there. Uh, it's not a 10, it's uh, 8 centimeters for that rectangle. So we get 8 times 3, and that's 24. Okay, And now we're going to add all of those things together. So we've got 176 plus 24 plus 42 plus 30 plus 24 takes us to 296. Okay. Now, you could have done it even a little bit differently, uh, more different than that. You could have just thought of kind of each shape separately. So the front square and the back square, right? I could have done the front square and then the back square. And then I could have done the front triangle and the back triangle. And then this rectangle and then these rectangles here, the rectangle on the bottom and the rectangle on the top. I can do each thing separately. There's no need to combine it all together. You can simply just do each small shape that you see. Okay, all right. Now, if you don't want to do it like that, method number two, you just have to add everything all together and subtract where they overlap. So for the rectangular prism, we've got the top and the bottom. Okay, so the top and the bottom is going to be 8 times 3, and it happens twice, so we're going to multiply it by 2. So 8 times 3 gives us 24, times the 2 is 48. Okay, and then we would have the left and the right side, so that is again actually 8 times 3 uh, times 2, and that gives us 48 again. And then we would have the front and the back, and the front and the back is going to be 8 times 8 times 2, because it happens twice, so that's 64 times 2, and that gives us 128. Okay, uh, so in total, the rectangular prism is 224 centimeters squared. For the triangular prism, so the triangular prism is made up of your two triangles, and then we have three rectangles. So we'll just say rectangle 1, rectangle 2, and rectangle 3. So for the two triangles, one triangle is base times height divided by 2, uh, but then we're going to times by 2 because there's two of them. And that's kind of nice, because when we get to do that, those twos cancel, so it's really there's just the same thing as base times height. So in our triangle, our base was, uh, sorry, our base here is 8, and the height is 6, so that's 6 times 8 for 48. 
and it's 48 because we've got the triangle on the front and the back. So yes, normally we divide by 2 to get 24, but when we multiply by 2, it goes back up to 48. Okay, the first rectangle, doesn't matter which one you want to call the first one, I tend to go in order of size. So the smallest side length in my triangle is the 6, and then the next smallest is the 8, and then the hypotenuse is the 10. And all of those rectangles have the same um, depth of 3 centimeters, right? They all travel that 3 centimeters. Okay, so for my three rectangles, I'm going to start out with this one is 6 times 3, the next one is 8 times 3, and then the last one is 10 times 3. Okay, so we get uh, for the first one, I'm going to go this one first because that's the color that got selected. First one we get 18, second one is 24, and the third one is 30. So the rectangular prism, or triangular prism, all together, 48, 18, 24, and 30, when we add all of those together, we have 120 centimeters squared. Now we have to think about where these shapes are overlapping. So these shapes overlap, where they are connected, is that second tri uh, rectangle that we found. They connect here on the top of the rectangular prism. And since it stretches that entire distance, I have to take away that whole rectangle. And I have to take that away twice. So if I'm really paying close attention, I could just actually totally remove this top and bottom. I could cancel that out because I have to take away that rectangle twice. And this calculation exactly says do that rectangle and times by two. So I could just take away the 48. Okay, that's why I don't really like using the overlap method, because it makes you add in things unnecessarily. Okay, but let's write it out. So that overlap um, was 6 times, uh, sorry, 8 times 3, goodness gracious, was 8 times 3. Okay, so that's our overlap method. And now we're going to take the rectangular prism and add the triangular prism and subtract that overlap twice. So I have to take away that 8 times 3 twice. So I'm taking away 24 twice, which is 48, what I'm subtracting. So that's 224 plus 120 minus 48. And that ends up giving me, again, 296 centimeters squared. So it doesn't matter which method you find the easiest. If you are comfortable finding uh, the total surface area of everything all together, and then just subtracting that overlap twice, go ahead. Um, I think method one, as our shapes become more complicated, and as soon as we start throwing things like holes into shapes, then being able to think about the surfaces that we can touch or the surfaces that are visible, it becomes a lot easier. Uh, eventually our questions, we will start saying the shape is fixed to the ground. And now you won't include the bottom, but you'll need to include the top. And so it's easier to adjust method one, thinking about what surfaces it is that you can touch. It's much easier to adjust that than it is to simply, in uh, the overlap method, think, oh, there's other surfaces now that you need to take away. So it's your call. Um, you pick whatever works best for you.